Dave Pemberton, and welcome to another edition of Grizz Talk. Uh, uh, my first guest today is Blake Cushenberry. Uh, Blake, uh, expect, I know you expect to get a lot of minutes this year, but the injury to Derek Nelson has pushed you into the starting lineup. Uh, what was it like for you when you first found out you were going to start, and is there any extra pressure on you considering who you were placing in the lineup? Yeah, because... There was a lot of pressure on me at the start, but when Campy says that it's not going to be one person that's going to pick up from what Derek has lost, it started to be a lot easier for me. Just what was your first reaction maybe when you first heard that you were going to start? Were you excited? I mean, oh, I was excited, but at the time I was real nervous. But as the season went, like the, after the second game, it was started to feel a lot better. Okay. I mean, in your debut, in your debut against Cleveland State, you looked, you know, kind of solid defensively, but a little hesitant in offense. Uh, you took just three shots and finished with one point. But against Oregon, you know, looking at the stat sheet, it appeared you looked, you know, for your shot more. You took ten shots, finished with nine points. Was the first game kind of just nerves, and is that kind of past that now? Yeah, because especially after the game, Campy says I gotta look a lot more to shoot. That's what I'm out there to do. So he said that's what I need to do on the floor. And can, uh, well, let's talk a little about, about your free throws in the closing minutes of the Oregon game. Uh, I know the crowd can get pretty crazy there at Oregon, and you probably can't repeat some of the things you heard you said while you were yeah. shooting those free throws. Uh, just what kind of what was going through your mind when uh, when you when you were stepping to the line there? Just that I gotta make these shots. I mean, did you did you get they just kind of block everybody out? Or? Yeah, it wasn't. It just felt like the floor, everything was shaking, but it's not nothing you can't get through. No, the first did the first one kind of give you confidence once yeah. you did. Especially after you made the first one, it was a lot easier to make the second one. Now, I don't know if you saw the first, uh, one of the other editions of Grizz Talk, but one of the, we did a trivia thing with the seniors on those uh, yeah. the surveys you filled out. And one of the answers kind of got some laughs was when you compared your game to Charles Barkley. Yeah. Just kind of what, uh, let's clear that up, just what part of your games would you compare to Barkley? All right, it's just the inside out, I think. Because he can shoot the ball, but then again, like, he can go low and just bully people, and that's what I'm trying to get my game in. So you, I mean, you're not really attitude wise this game. No, no, not like that. It's just the way he plays. Okay, now now we're gonna do a little uh, word association. I'll say a word or a phrase, and you, know, you give me the first word or phrase that pops in your head. Uh, the first one's gonna be Drew Maynard. Add. Uh, Matt Samuels. Finesse. Uh, the Detroit Pistons. Talented. The Romeo Bulldogs. Dynasty. Jonathan Jones. Um, a leader. Uh, Keith Benson. Dominant. Thanksgiving. My time. Oakland fans. Um, I couldn't even answer that one yet. <laughs> and uh, Coach Campy. Huh? Coach Campy. A winner. Uh, welcome to the Coach's Corner of uh, Grizz Talk segment. Uh, this week I'm joined by Oakland assistant coach Sally Washington. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, so now you guys are set to play Iowa in one of the four games in the Las Vegas Invitational, a game that will be shown on the Big Ten Network. Uh, just kind of what can we expect out of it from the Hawkeyes? I think you'll get a, a very well coached team. The team's going to come out and play hard. Uh, a lot of what was done at Butler under Coach Licklider is carrying that over to you know, the Hawkeye program. And, uh, as he's still trying to build that program, you know, there's a sense of toughness and uh, about those guys, and they'll be able to shoot the ball. So we'll be definitely have to to defend and, and rebound and, and do what we've been doing the past couple of games. Okay. And uh, sounds like it might be a good one. Uh, just my next question is: You work probably with the Oakland guards, and as a coach and a player, you've seen a lot of you know good guards in your day. Uh, Jonathan Jones has earned a lot of praise, you know, coming into this season against Oregon. He had a big game. And uh, just is he now just now reaching his potential? And uh, just how good do you think this guy can end up being? You know, the sky's the limit. I mean, he's definitely uh, a, a continued work in progress. Uh, my first year was his first year as a freshman here, so I've seen him grow as a player and, and even more so as a leader. I think that's where he's really matured this season, and uh, that has helped his game on the floor as well. So, uh, what where is his potential win is really going to depend on Jonathan, but uh, he's doing an unbelievable job right now leading this team. and uh, He definitely carries the weight on the shoulders uh, of this program, but I think uh, he's handling it well and uh, he'll, continue to, he'll continue to excel. Okay, uh, just uh, kind of uh, when you uh, 
spoke to uh, Lance and Sexton, Sexton grad Drew Valentine that we signed, and uh, he kind of said that you played a big role in him uh, coming here. He said that you kind of came to his uh, sur after to see him after his surgery, and that meant a lot to him. Uh, just kind of what kind of player do you think Oakland's getting in uh, Drew Valentine? Well, that whole situation was kind of unique in the fact that, you know, he, I'm an alum of uh, Sexton, and so it was pretty special to me to be able to go back into uh, my old school and be able to, uh, to grab one of our uh, players. Uh, but in terms of Drew, I mean, the kid is an unbelievable leader, uh, hard worker. Uh, I kind of call him the uh, jack of all trades, you know, master of none, but good at a whole lot of things. So, you know, I think his intensity, his his basketball IQ, his leadership, those are the type of things that we're looking for Drew to bring to our program and uh, just that winning mentality. Okay. I know you were kind of uh, looking forward to this. Your first visit to the show, we're going to do a little little word association. I'll just say a word or a phrase, and you give me the first word or phrase that pops in your head. Uh, the first one is uh, Blake Cushenberry. Um, shooter. Matt Samuels. Uh, DC. Uh, Eric Kangas. Uh, man, Kango. He is. Uh, he, he he's lights out. The Grand Rapids hoops. Wow. <laughs> he went throwback on that one. Um, interesting times there. The Detroit Dogs. The dear, the dirty dogs. Uh, the fun bunch. Only the, those guys know what that means. Western Michigan. Uh, unbelievable program there. Yeah. The Oakland fans? Oakland fans, the greatest game. Uh, Jeff Tungate. Since we're doing the, uh, you know, we have the whole Wizard of Oz thing, Jeff is the team. <laughs> Darren Sorensen? He's the lion. And uh, Greg Campy. Ah, awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us on Grizz Talk. That's all we got.